Calculus BC, we're in uh, chapter 6, section 1. Here's part 2 of our lesson. We're on uh, the flip side of the notes here, and notice what we're seeing at the top here. Consider graphs such as x equals f of y and x equals g of y. Instead of having y equals f of x and y equals g of x, imagine you see this instead. The roles of x and y, as we see here, are switched. We're going to integrate with respect to y. And uh, what you can see is instead of having boundaries on the x-axis, we're going to have boundaries on the y. We're going to integrate between c and d. You can see c and d are right here. Uh, but what is super, super important when we're integrating traditionally as we have, it was always top minus bottom. When we're integrating in this context, it will always be right minus left. Right minus left. And uh, you can envision that uh, we have rectangles being formed, uh, not with the x-axis, but with the y. And you can see as we'll have our rectangle that is further away, in this case our f of y uh, minus g of y. And uh, hopefully that is going to be something you can hold on to. And you can see we have this right here. But it's always right boundary minus left boundary. That's how you will find the area between two curves. Now, I don't think I need to tell you that uh, very often this newer version of graphing can get a little intimidating for kids. However, it can be exceptionally helpful and very, very useful for us. Uh, first off, I'm sure just a little bit of review. I'm sure you remember that if you had y equals x squared, you had a parabola that opened upwards. And likewise, if you had y equals negative x squared, you had a parabola that opened downwards. But I hope you remember that when you had x equals y squared, you would have a parabola that opened towards the right. And when you had x was equal to negative y squared, you had a parabola that opened towards the left. You should have seen this in Algebra 2, and I know you certainly saw it in AMA and Accelerated Math Analysis. That being said, even knowing that x is equal to y squared, minus 3, you might expect this parabola uh, to be opening up towards the right. I think sometimes students get a little uncomfortable and say, well, I know that much, but I'm a little confused about the negative 3. And you might wonder what kind of a shift this is going to cause to a parabola that would open up towards the right. Uh, you might wonder if it moves right, left, up, down. Uh, well, if the rules of uh, x and y are, are changed, and if you see this, you might guess that there is a shift to the left or to the right. And, uh, you know, as we look at this, we can begin to wonder just by plotting points as a way of getting confidence. Uh, you could see that if y were to equal 0, then x would be negative 3, wouldn't it? It's a nice, easy way. You see, y is acting as if it were our x right here. And likewise, if you were to let y equal, I'm sorry, x equals 0, you know, just by, you know, spinning things about a little bit, you would have had y squared minus 3 equals 0. You'd add a 3. You'd have the square root of 3 and the negative square root of 3. So, uh, you know, just as we had seen, we're going to open towards the right and towards, uh, in this regard, you can plot points to figure out what's going on. But, you know, x equals negative 2y squared. Here we'd have a parabola that we would believe would be opening towards the left. It would only take a moment to confirm that. But here we have this curve. You can see you wouldn't want to have your rectangles going uh, 
top minus bottom in this regard. You know, it, it, everything is switched about. Uh, so as we'd envision a rectangle being formed, you'd want to have right minus left. But of course, another huge issue would be what boundaries are we talking about? Well, uh, you know, if you were to set your x's together, you'd have y squared minus 3 would equal negative 2y squared. And if I were to minus a y squared from both sides, you'd have negative 3 equals negative 3y squared. Divide by negative 3 on both sides, and you might not be too surprised to see that your y values would be positive and negative 1. What am I getting at? You're going to integrate between negative 1 and positive 1. But again, we want to do right minus left. Not top minus bottom here, but right minus left. Your right boundary would be negative 2y squared. And then I'm going to subtract all of my left boundary that's x equals y squared minus 3 right here. And we'll have our dy. Now, uh, it would only take a same moment to uh, distribute this negative to get negative 3y squared. Well, I'm combining like terms a little bit. Jumping ahead a little bit, I'm sure you can see where that's coming from. Uh, but that, of course, is going to be negative 1 to 1 of negative 3y squared plus 3dy. Now, a wonderful thing you could do to get some help graphing this is, I mean to evaluate this, is to realize that this is an even integrand. Uh, you know, if, if you were to uh, let y be replaced by negative y, you'd get exactly the same thing. So uh, we had a property from last chapter where we could say because this is even, uh, we can go ahead and more quickly work this out. And look, uh, this definitely can be worked out very fast. Let's do an antiderivative. Uh, bump that up to a 3 and divide. You'd get a negative y to the third plus 3y. And now we're just going to evaluate that between 1 and 0. Uh, by the time you would have typed this into a calculator, uh, you would have effectively gotten the answer by hand more quickly, wouldn't you? Uh, so 3 plus negative 1 is 2. 2 times 2, you'd get 4. And there you have it. Uh, this area between your curves would be a 4. Well, for the sake of time, we're not going to do... Uh, you know both part A and part B here uh, so very often I think it's important for us to to work in the most intelligent manner in in the way that we see uh, fit uh, so let's go ahead and see which method would be easier we have a square root function and that's going to of course look something like so it's a parabola opening on its side I hope you can envision that we have y is equal to negative x. Well, that's going to be a curve that looks something like so. And we're going to have x is equal to 1 all the way out to x is equal to 4. And uh, they want us to find the enclosed area. And I think you can see what's happening right here. Our enclosed area is going to look something like so. So, of course, we could make this work regardless. We really could. But I hope you can see if we did right minus left, this would really get ugly. <coughs> Our boundaries for the right would always be x equals 4. You could see that. But our left boundary would sometimes be this line y equals negative x up by the x-axis or even up here. You could see that it would then be, uh, you know, a, a left entry or a left boundary of x equals 1. And then as we get near the top here, we could see that our left boundary would actually be y equals radical x. 
And then we'd have to solve for x for all of these. You can do that, of course. Uh, you could square both sides and get y squared is equal to x. Uh, but listen, no doubt about it, it's so much easier to always have an integration like traditionally that we've been holding, integrating with respect to x, doing top minus bottom. Doing this, we already know what our x boundaries are. It will go from 1 all the way up to 4. And it, that's like saying you'd have little rectangles going from x equals 1 to x equals 4. We're going to do top minus bottom. And our top would be radical x. Our bottom would be y equals negative x. And guys, right now it's really not all that difficult. We can go ahead and uh, finish this problem up. This is x to the 1 half plus an x. And then as we work this through, let's take our antiderivative, bump that up by 1. We'll get 3 halves, put in a 2 thirds out in front. Uh, double check that you're right by taking your derivative. Uh, antiderivative of x is just x squared all over 2. And then we're going to you know, finish our fundamental theorem right here. So plug in your 4, and you'll have 2 thirds, and this is 4 to the 3 halves, plus 4 squared all over 2, minus, well, the 1. 1 to a power, of course, is just a 1, so we'd have our 2 thirds, and here's a half. So 4 to the 3 halves, that's the square root of 4, which is 2. 2 cubed is 8. Here we'd get 16 thirds. Uh, 4 squared is 16, and 16 divided by 2 is an 8. Now we could say minus a 2 thirds and minus a 1 half. And then we just have to do a little bit of cleaning up. 16 thirds minus 2 thirds, well my goodness, that's going to be a 14 thirds. And 8 minus 1 half. Well, you know, that's 16 over 2 minus 1 over 2, and that's 15 all over 2. Let's get a common denominator. Multiply by 2 over 2, multiply by 3 over 3. We'd have 28 over 6 plus 45 all over 6. And uh, working that out, we'd have 73 over 6. Okay, as we take a look at our third and final page, it will only take you a moment to realize for a problem like this that things are not going to be uh, you know, easily graphed by hand. You're going to need help with technology. Now I've sped some things up in the video. I've already typed out y1 and y2 with these functions. And if you were to just hit zoom 6, you would get, here's your first, that quartic. It almost looks a little bit like a parabola. And here is that fractional problem. My goodness, it, it's definitely going to intersect and enclose some area. But if we went to zoom decimal, perhaps that would be a little bit nicer. And I think you can hopefully see that you know, I'm going to move my cursor right here. We're enclosing this region. Sure looks like we're going from x equals 0. And if you plugged in a 0 for x, you'd let y equals 0. You can see that's the case. Even if you hit trace, you're at 0, 0. You could up arrow and see you're there at y2 also. What I'm interested in, though, is this other intersection. And this is why we have this problem. We're going to have to use our intersect tool. And it will say first curve. Well, you can see up here, that's the quartic. I'll hit enter. Second curve, well, that's the fractional one. I'll just hit enter. But then it will say guess. So I'm going to right arrow and put my cursor pretty close to where it looks like it's going to cross. You can see it's about at x equals 1.180. And I'm going to do a second quit and hit x. And there it is. But I'm going to store that for alpha a. And I'm going to pick up on the next video 
finishing up with the rest of this problem.